Hello, hello, and welcome to our YouTube Live, Stampin' with Sandra. So, we have, uh, this evening, I am carrying on from my, my Sunday theme on Facebook Live. If you didn't see me, then you will be able to, let me just get my camera sorted, you will be able to catch up on live on the Facebook, just in my page. Um, and I was using a new product, um, new to me, so I was using the Dots and Spot. So I'm going to get you down onto the table and we're in for another wing it tonight. My life at the moment is extremely hectic. So um, we, I have a load of ideas that I scribbled down before, oh, over the weekend, I think, and things I want to try with you and share some ideas with you. So let's get you moved over to the table and there we go. So, oh, I'll take that one. Oh dear, this isn't going properly. There you go. Stay there. You go there. You go there. There we go. So dots and spots, a lovely new die in the annual catalogue. Um, it's one of those standalone dies that um, often get overlooked. There was one in the last um, one and I saw one of my friends, Lisa, I saw her use it, uh, the iconic dies. And I think she'd learned it from someone else she'd seen. And it's one of those things that sometimes those standalone ones do just get a little bit overlooked. So I'm just gonna bring this back on here, just a sec and just try and zoom you out so you can see the catalogue. There we go. So this is the Dots and Spots, it's on page 170. Um, there's a few in here that are just on their own. They don't have a matching stamp set. So I'm just logging over to the chat just to see if I see when anybody comes over. Hi Shaz, lovely to see you. Did you catch up on Sundays with the Dots and Spots? Because I'm going to be carrying that theme through this week, so I've got the dots and spots out again. Um, it is another wing it, because my life, as I said, is just a little bit hectic at the moment. But all good, but just very hectic. Um, I live a busy life anyway, but it's more, even more so at the moment. So these are the dots and spots. Here's one that I was using the other night. And it shows, oh, I said about being cheese, didn't I? So it, the holes are made um, from the one die. So this die here, um, very useful. It does, it's great for backgrounds, lots of things we can do with it. I've scribbled a ton of ideas down, uh, things that I'd like to try and play, and just a few more ways of sharing with you. I haven't reconstructed the card from the other night. I can show you what I did the other night. This was following on from a um, one of the um, design concept artists for Stampin' Up. And I once had a card that was made inspired by one of her designs. And this was one that I saw. Now there's changes I would made. I, I should have done these on the slant because there's too many straight lines on here. And I would make the, um, the gray a little bit darker, top and bottom. So it kind of flows a little bit more and takes some of that white space away. So I am gonna redo that card. I've got the materials out there ready to do at some point. Um, but for today, um, I yes, I've got some ideas. I'm gonna try some metallics with it because I think this would look nice in metallics. Um, I'm gonna put just some toppers. So I have the in colors again, but I have the heart duo punch. So we might use those. Um, and on the other hand, we might use the oval, the double oval punch. So I have that one with me as well. So we will play and see. Yes, you did rewatch, that's great. Now, excuse me, but I've been out most of the day. We had a very late tea, so I've got some nice um, black tea here, weak black, um, uh, with a slice of lemon in there. This is my um, Ukrainian family. Maria has got me on to having lemon in my tea again, which is really good. It's lovely and refreshing. So I have some coppers, I have some gold. I love the copper. I'm not sure how that's gonna fit in with the ink colors. So we might be grabbing some more colors, but what I would like to do is to take a piece of this. And I have some cream here because I think creams would go. Some, another project I was working on actually uses some of the more neutral colours. So I'm thinking actually, let's see if the gold, what do we think? Have a vote. Would, with these two colours, would the gold go better or the copper go better? That's one avenue with those ones. And this is the other avenue with those ones. And they're still a bit shiny on there, aren't they? I think we have 
we have those look quite nice together but then if we took that out and put this one in I think this is a bit too yellowy so it's quite bright but it's it's quite yellowy I think I might go with those tones you know um, yeah let's see how we go okay so for starters my um, whole panel is just going to be cut like so um, it seems a bit wasteful because we don't know how much we're going to use but I will actually use the pieces that come out so for those of you who joined me on um, Sunday line that up where I'm going to cut I'll just take that off if you leave foil in your big shot your cut and emboss machines when you die cut it through if there's any scratching on the plates like here the scratching on here can actually indentate on indent onto here so if you've got sort of use it for some letters or something on here that will actually indent onto the copper so i would whenever you're using foils i would always urge you to trim this down to the same size as the panel that you're going to use that way even that strip will stay intact and you'll be able to use those on another project okay so i'm going to pop those back in the packet in that one i think oh, that's the gold and pop it back in in there for now so that's safe so this is going to be my panel i'm going to go through um and we when i did these on sunday i had a little tray here this has got white ones in now we had some lovely ideas in the comments as to what these could be used for i thought that was really funny so um those on their own would look good um they look like um the sweeteners from tea and coffee sweeteners they also could be used as snow they could be used as a shaker and could you be used for all sorts i'm going to be trying a little slightly different today i am going to try and keep them they will get muddled up um and sadly it is white on the back but I am going to run this through the machine because I want you to see how beautiful this is going to look. So let's just bring over the machine. So here's my cut and emboss machine. I'll just move those out of the way and make sure that's not going to knock my cup of tea over. Um, so I'm going to put these onto here and it is virtually cut to size. Okay, so we'll run that through. Uh, my plate is here. So we're just going to place that on there one die and it makes a fabulous background so i haven't done it in the yellow one yet for cheese i'm just at the moment i'm only just about um holding out on my lives i've got some tutorials that really must get done um but they are just time constraints really so what i'm going to do here is just use my um take your pick tool I do have some scrap paper so I'm just going to roll this over here so that they capture on the piece of scrap paper. They will be inclined to flick um, and go everywhere so I'm just running the die brush over. love my die brush it works so well. By keeping it onto a piece of scrap paper you are kind of eliminating a little bit of the flicking everywhere because it will capture on there and then we can just tip those into our little pot. So if I wipe my hands over the back to get any loose ones off, I've set mine up so that I also have the, this is the um, take your pick tool. I have the spatula that end, but I also have the pricky tool this end. Okay, so any loose stragglers, I can just poke those through and get rid. Okay, a couple of those. We will peel this off and wait for the wow factor. Please just wait. Wow, look at that. Look how bright that is. How gorgeous. Lovely. So there's a few little stray ones hanging on the back there. So we can wipe those off, poke those through, get rid of them all. Just rub them through. And when you're looking for a quick card, backgrounds like this, let me just pop that on back on the sheet and that one. Okay, so backgrounds like this, lovely quick backgrounds, can be the making just a quick card, really, really simple. So I'm gonna bring my tub back on. All of these will be able to be used. So I'm just gonna pop that in and slide those in. I hope you can see me doing that. Just tap those off. 
piece of scrap paper just helps them slide easily. So I have a whole little stash in there. Now glue dots are going to be my best friend tonight as well. So I'm going to have those out and we'll be using the glue dots on the inside. Okay, now what I'm going to say here is the glue dots are actually slightly larger than these. So maybe glue dots won't be on the repertoire tonight. So we're going to take this piece first and I'm going to take a piece of cardstock, um, a card base. I have one already cut here, so I might put a layer in there. Um, I think these would look quite nicely together, that copper, but it needs to be broken up. So I'm going to put a piece of the vanilla behind, like so, and just see how that's going to look. Hmm, that's not bad. I like that. So I think we're going to trim that down. So I want to make sure that this is in my sizes that I want to use. So on the back here, I'm going to use the back of my, just using the copper with the sun suite. Ah, oh, yeah, that looks nice, doesn't it, Shaz? So I'm going to leave, level these up a little bit. I want to take that edge off here so that I've got a little bit too close to the edge for my liking. So I'm going to take that so that the cut pieces are just over the edge of the trim. So we get a nice straight line. Okay, so I have a straight edge down there. And then what sort of size would I like to go on here? See, if I can get that in another straight line that side, that would be very good. So if I grab a pencil, if I can reach over for one, I'm gonna come and take this down just the same, just inside of this side of the line. Okay, I want to make that about there. Okay, so bring that one down there. And then this one, we want to bring that one in just about there. Okay, so we'll cut, make those two cuts and we will go from there. So again, these are hanging over that edge, so there isn't any um, extra little bits, so we haven't got fluffy bits, as I like to call them. So there's all my straight edges, and my straight edges on here. So let's try that on there. Okay. So we do need to take that down a little bit, because we want to put that onto here. Okay, so we did that a little bit too eager beaver. beaver. So we're going to take this one down to the next hole, to this side, and we'll take this one down to the next hole. Then that will take account of being on my layer here. Mm -hmm. So we have got some shaving to do. When you're working with things like this, it's kind of a bit tricky to gauge exactly the width you want. I'm going in between the dots whilst keeping an even count. So this one here is going to come up there and we want to be just inside that a little bit and the other mark was here so we want to come in on that piece we might need another shaving but we can always do that that's not a problem okay so let's try again so we're going to line this up on here that's not bad actually okay so we've got a good a good size round there. We just want a little shaving off the white, I think. And I'd be happy with that. Be good. This one looks a little bit uphill, so I'm gonna shave that slightly as well. Just make sure it's level along the top of your trimmer here. Otherwise you can get a little bit of a wedge forming. Okay, so take that away. And then do the same on the cream. So we are narrowing that down to the border top and bottom and then where we want to mark it on here. So I'm going to come in about there. Okay, so take that edge off. Shaving is good if you've got a good um, guillotine type cutter. Okay, I um, am a bit wary of the ones with the, the rotary blades. If you've got one that's not a Stampin' Up one, the rotary blades, they come down, they are a little bit, um, they can grate um, if you've got a tiny little slither to take off, they can just push it and tear it. So do be careful on that. So that on its own is going to make a nice base on there. Okay, It's very bright against the lights in here, so um, that's one on there like so. Okay, and then we can have, I've got some nice, some of the in-colour ribbons. So let's, we'll play with those. 
So I'm going to get those ones down first because I think that's a good base. So I'm going to take my Tombow and get this one down to start with. There we go. A little bit down the middle. And get that layer onto the card. So we've got that small border around the outside edge. Get that in the middle. There we go. And just check that's the size again. We're okay top to bottom. So this one can have the Tombow I'm going to hold up because I just want this to go around the edges. I want to kind of like do little loops on here. Can you see? I don't know if you can see that. I'm kind of looping round where the where the dots go just to make sure that all the edges are caught because we don't want any little loose pieces. So just winging it round those and the same down this bit. Okay, so I can't go straight round the edges like I normally do, but I can go gently along there. Okay, and there's no glue on the front of my card, my foil. Always try and avoid it, no matter how hard you try. Um, it's very difficult to get the glue off the foil. Okay, so there we've got one background. Okay, so that's really nice and vibrant and lovely. So I'm going to put that to one side. Um, I'm going to cut another layer for another card. I've got this piece in here, I might use that. do my good old um, 13, 3 and 9 and a half. And just check that for a, a card base size. Make sure that the edges are even Stevens. I need to bring that in again. That's another half. I haven't got my measurements all written down today. So. I am winging it, I did say at the start. So that's a good, nice size to have. Okay, so it's got a good even border all the way around. So we're gonna use that one. And I'll take another base card. So this is my whole sheet of um, A4 and we're gonna cut this in half and score it in half. So I tend to do the scoring first. I'll do the scoring on this one. And our metric sizes are the 14.85 for a tent card and then cut it at 10 and a half or you can do it the other way and have the fold going the other direction. Okay, so I'll keep that one and pop that one back in the packet. There we are. So with this one here, we need the bone folder. Okay, and that could be another layer on there like so. We might pop a colour behind that, but we'll come back to that in a sec. So my dots and spots on its own, I've just cut that one tonight in the copper, and I'm gonna do, I just wanna grab my stamp set opposite. <laughs> I'm just gonna read over a little bit. I was playing with it for a tutorial, so let me just grab all my pieces back again and the set, there we go. Sorry if my shoulder was in the way. So this was another set I'm playing with at the moment called Cottage Rose. This is the Abigail Rose um, collection. It's really nice, um, got some lovely papers in there, but I was doing some stamping for another project. And because I have the, the colors of ink out, then I thought that might be nice to use some of these because they go with the um, um, early espresso. Just gonna grab those from the other side of the table. I've kept everything so nice and tidy. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do some stamping in this one, but I want to show you how I did the images that are on here. This was a this is a, a large stamp. It's got a love, large focal image and it's got some greenery on here. So I want to just show you, this is just a little technique today. I'm gonna to go back to basics with some of these. Uh -huh. 
And I'm just going to bring the, the green standard um, stamp and marker, stamp and write markers. They come in colour families or as the big box. Um, I have had these a number of years and they just keep lasting. If you want to top the inks up, you can use them from your refills. Ink refills do go in there. You can pull the nib out and um, put the um, nib into a little puddle of the ink and it will draw it up, it will suction it up. Okay, or you can just leave the nib in. A little egg cup or something, a little dish, just with some reinker in. So what I'm using here is the wide end, the brush tip of the stamps, and I'm just colouring these in just on their side. I'm not using the point, I'm not stabbing at it, I'm just using it on its side. Okay, and I'm just taking that along those edges. It's, re -ink it's inked from when I did some earlier today, so before we went out. So they're all the green. Now I'm going to use some of my early espresso, but I'm only going to come round on the outside, on these edges where they overlap a little bit. Okay, so I want to have the edge of the flower so follow that line along where I want the, the brown. Okay. But thinking about doing what I was going to do tonight, I thought these colours will go lovely with the metallics. So I've just come across that corner just where they overlap with the green. And now I'm going to take my ink pad. Cheating a little bit, instead of doing this all by hand, if you use your early espresso ink pad, you can actually press this all the way along. We're just not touching on the green. We're just going round those edges, okay, just to get the body of the ink on there. And then we can just make sure that they are all nicely covered, if any little bits missed. Okay, but that's lovely. So I'm now gonna take a piece of my very vanilla. It's a big change for me to go to very vanilla for today because I use so much of the Stampin' Up Whisper White. I'm just going to come along here and stamp that image. And because I've got two colours on here, it will pick that up. It's pressing on there really heavily. It's rubber stamped, so I don't need the mat underneath. Now, you can't really see much from there. All you can see is a very dark image and the green image. Okay, but I'm going to bring that to life. Grab a piece of kitchen roll and another slurp of my tea because I'm sure it's gone cold. Just have a quick wet the whistle. There we go. Okay, so what I've got here is my Wink of Stella pen. I'm right handed so I've moved it to this side of me. So I've just shaken that up and make sure that some is squeezed through so that there's some in the barrel here. Okay, so that the nib will be wet. Okay, if you're using, you can use an old Wink of Stella when it's run out completely. Those of you who follow me know that I use this quite a bit. Um, this is going to remind you of when you, uh, when I was at primary school, we had these um, colouring books and they were all impregnated with colour and you had just a paintbrush and a pot of water. Hours and hours of fun they brought. Who knew that I'd be doing it again? when I'm considerably older. Um, so I'm just colouring in the elements here and it will bring through the glitter from the brush. Okay, but it's picking up the early espresso ink colour. Okay, I'm working around the outside first so you'll be able to see where that's pulling those colours in. Very, very pale. It's kind of like water colouring, but I keep the brush coming towards me. And it's just picking up the pigment colour from the water-based ink that I've put on there. Okay, so you can see the difference on there already. I'll hold that up to the camera for you. So you can see I've come around the outside and it's just the espresso ink that is already on there. I don't just scribble all over because it will look like it's scribbled over. So I'm just colouring in the petals as I go, working my way round like so. Okay, and a circular movement, stroking them inwards. And then this piece in here will of course be darker. Okay, if you want to add any extra shading, you can tap your ink pad on a block 
and then pick some more up and put some more lines in. I'm just going to wipe the nib of this because I don't want any dark transferring. And now I'm going to do my green, the garden green. OK, so just using circular motions. Because of the Wink of Stella is not really a wet brush, it's got the glitter in it. So it gives a nice sparkle, nice sheen to it. Okay, so I'm just going to colour these in, each petal. And just that nice subtle colour is just pulled through. Okay, and then this one. And then this one. Okay, it's quite a nice technique to do. It's very, very dainty, very delicate. And can be done in any colour. So you can pick up any colour like that. Okay, so I'm going to finish off wiping that nib again and just finishing off adding some sparkle just to bring that colour through a little bit more in the pieces on here. Like so. Wipe that off. Now this image has actually has a die that fits exactly here. So we're going to cut that image out. Or we might not just thinking of something else. Let me just bear with, get them untangled. Yeah. So we could place this on here and actually have that whole piece die cut. Or we could actually make that into the layer on this card instead, which might be nice. I quite like that idea. We could have it from the side or we could have it this way up or this way up. Oh, which way looks nicest? I think I'd like it that way. So this piece actually is not bad for size, considering this was a scrap I was just stamping on. Okay, I think that will do us quite nicely. Let's leave that one out for now. Okay, so I think I like that on there like that. Now I'm going to bring a greeting on that we have in those sets. and say which one is going to fill in nicely up here. I got one here nice that's nice quite nice you are positively the greatest um, or best wishes might just go down as a good neutral for everybody okay we'll do best wishes so we have here we had another die set okay we have here the stylish shapes I think I use these on Sunday as well Stylish Shapes are a new die set and it, it's a good one for those of us who are mourning the loss of Stitch So Sweetly. Okay, we have some good sized banners in here and I think this best wishes. Yes, it does. It fits well inside this one. We have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Yeah, five squares, six circles and four banners. Okay, I know that this one should fit nicely on there. So I'm going to use this one to cut out my sentiment. So we'll have that scrap back. Let me see if I've got another screen piece that will do that nicely. There we go. That will go, go quite nicely. Okay. So I'm going to ink this up while I've got the colours out. Okay. So we'll do that one there. And we will stamp that straight on there. Like I said, they, these are rubber-based um, stamps, so they don't need to have the mat underneath us this time. And let's just take that out of the way, excuse me. Um, and we will die cut this one. So bring the machine on. I'm not going to cut that one at the moment. I'm going to leave that and see how this pans out. Mm -mm -mm. Slide that down, put my piece on here, and we're just going to die cut that sentiment. I am using vanilla on vanilla. Okay, self on self is quite nice sometimes. Um, just raise it up on pads and it will just bring that out. Pass that one through. Okay, take that one away. We'll use that again in a sec. So take that piece of tape off and that's just going to bring that die through and that's just a nice little sentiment but I don't want this just to have those layers like so I think I'd like to take that down a little bit we're going to bring the dots on in a sec but I'm going to take the tiny slither off here 
this is now measuring nine, oh, 9.8. Let's bring this down to I'm going to take a little bit off each side and make this down to nine centimetres. And then a little bit off the top. I need the big guillotine for that. I think a nine by 13.3 should do me. Okay, and then we place it on here and we just see how the sizes are going. So I'm going to put that one on there. And I would like to have a thin whisper of the garden green behind there. So I think I'm just going to grab that from the shelf. Bear with, bear with it. Because I've got the lovely green in here, this will just enhance that slightly. Let's try and find a piece long enough. Nope. So we had nine centimetres, it's nine by 13.3. So we want this to just be about three millimetres bigger. So 13.3 will go to 13.6. If you're in the States, I'd use um, just a sixteenth bigger. So nine is going to be 9.3. Now, hopefully this is going to be my layer. Just a smidgen around the outside. We don't want to make a big issue of this. We just want to make it a tiny little border just to bring out those colours. Okay. Love it. So we'll pop that on there. And then we'll, we will mat these today. You know me, I like to gut... We won't gut today. A little scribble in the middle. Put that one on here. And then this panel is going to get raised. So I'm going to grab my dots through here, my embellishment, my stamp and dimensionals even. Underneath. Have a new sheet out somewhere. There we go. One of these days I'm going to take a photo of my table after a live so you can see what the craft math is because believe me it, it does get crazy when you've got everything flying all directions okay. there we go. in fact I quite like it when we have people coming over because to craft with me because then everything gets tidied up but it doesn't last very long so I'm going to pull these pads off the back here and two more and two. And flick that one out of the way and then this will come down onto the card because I'm on a dark board um, that's dark not dart <laughs> um, it's going to be hard to see espresso against the black but I'll hold that up for you like so and we're going to use this one as our sentiment on here now we can have that I like greetings when they come slightly off the where we are today slightly off the edge of the card like so so I do quite like that effect we've raised this one up here so I'll put this one down flat so it's not too fat to go in the envelope but what I'm going to do here is take that around the em uh, the edges with the green to bring that green got a little bit here a little bit there just a tiny accent and get away from the brown so I'll take a sometimes I use a brush um, tonight because I've got the green um, Stampin um, blending brush here I'm just going to use a little bit of this we're just going to go gently around the edge and we are going downwards across the edge. Okay, look. Just coming along there. We've got the stitching there, so we're just enhancing that just a little bit. Okay. And I keep it away from my card, because believe it or not, you can very lightly splatter against the edges. So I'm actually holding it over my ink pad so that that's going through there. Okay, and then into the corner again. These are so soft and so gentle. Now I don't clean my brushes. Sometimes I have done one recently because I'm running out of enough colours. Um, and I've found that 
the color here just sits on the surface it's not a long way down unless they're solid colors that you use dark colors that you use quite regularly but you can actually clean these on your stampin um chamois simply chamois okay so the best way to check this is by laying it on your card and seeing if you've done enough to it okay in fact i think that could do with a bit more along that top edge but by laying it on the vanilla again you can see better being too gentle okay a little bit heavier now i'm rushing i'll probably make it silly that's that yeah that has gone a little bit a bit too much okay a little bit more on the front just to even it up Okay, so that one is going to come down flat on the card now, just with that hint of green coming through. Okay, so we're going to pop this on there. And going, th oh, going through the middle, you want to make sure that you don't put it on the right on the edge here that's going to hang over, but you do want to secure this end down. So that end has got to be secure. Okay, so we're going to pop that. I want it down far enough. I'm bring that there okay make sure it's nice and straight now this is when the fun begins because I want my other um, stamp and um, take your pick tool and the putty end here just needs to be pushed up very slightly don't get a think it's not working and take it a little bit higher because it does actually keep protruding a little bit so what I'm going to do here is bring over my little copper dots, okay? The coppers will go with the browns in here. So what I'm going to do is put some decoration on here. So I decide where I want to go, and then I'm going to wipe the nib of my Tombow. So I've got nice, clean dots, okay? And then I will just pick one up randomly and work out where I'd like to place them. Do I want to put three coming down there? I don't think I think they're a bit big to go randomly over the card um, but you can hold them in place and just see what you think we'd like mm -hmm. one two three I think I might just go across there so I'm going to start in the corner with one little dot just a dot of my Tombow that's all it is and I've picked one up on the end here you can see in the camera just going to press that down. I hold it down with a nail and just make sure that that is actually adhered down where I want it. And then we can see where we want to put the next one. So I can put a little line of three going across. Normally I like threes coming downwards, but in this instance, I could do two coming down actually, and then one underneath. So we could just try that. So I've got one on here already, so I'm going to use that one. Okay, these dots, as I said earlier, they are a little bit too small to have the, um, the glue dots. The mini glue dots are just that bit too big. These are too small, whichever way you like to look at it. I think I'm just going to even that up. We don't normally do evens, but I think it needs it on this one. Um, yeah, they will protrude either side, so we don't really want that to be. up later thanks for joining me just working out whether I want this one to be evens like that two and two we'll actually want to bring that down one more to make the odd numbers I think we'll bring an odd one oops that's one on there and then like so oops. just hold it down and then just press it in place. You can always use the heel of this just to tap them down. Okay, so that's those out of the way for now. Now the other one I was going to do was to do some splatters on there first with my Wink of Stella. So this is a little bit risky doing it. Bring two sheets of scrap on. Bring a couple on there and do it that way on. Because I've got the Wink of Stella in here, I do just want to do a little bit more with it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So again, I squeeze this to the end to make sure it's runny and there's some in the little barrel and all I'm going to do is flick this all over the surface and I'm holding the nib downwards. The nearer you are to your project, the bigger the splats will be. Okay, if you don't think they're big enough, you can squeeze it again and get some more into the barrel just down, but don't do it over your project because sometimes you can just get a big blob. Okay. There we go. So that one's over there. The lid goes on there. So that's that card finished. I'll take the paper away, but I'll just bring that up to the camera for you. We have got bright lights in here again tonight, so hopefully if I twist that, you can see those sparkles throughout. Okay, so that's just how to use some of those dots from the page, your, your die cut. And then the other way I was going to use was actually to do some spotting technique. So this one that we did first, I'm actually going to bring another colour in and I'm not sure which colour is going to go with those, but I've got the in colours out here. I'll just find which one of these colours will go um, most with it. The red is too close, that won't work. I am kind of in my head, I'm erring towards this one. The, the blues, oh, the blues look, might look nice. Or the darker blue. One here. I think that could actually look quite regal on there. I think that's going to look nice. So that's the choice for my next colour. I can go on the floor. And I'm going to cut this once more with the whole panel without wasting too much of the piece here. I will trim that down to use again. do another one. Oh, hi we've got some more people joining you're not no oh, you're late catch up yeah that's fine we're here I'll just be putting the um, thumbnail on the front of the video this is a live one on YouTube so um, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and then you'll be notified when I go live in future because it will pop up and say that I'm live um, and that might help how are you Louise nice to see you um, so what I'm doing here is playing with the dots and spots, spots and dots, dots and spots, spots and dots. Um, I'm just going to run this one through the, the um, cut and emboss again because what I want this time is I actually want the dots bits. I don't want the background, but the background will not go to waste. It will be used on another card. So this is one um, die cut. It's a standalone and I'm just going to run this through here. Um, the other thing I mentioned about the coppers, about making sure you don't have any pieces overhanging because it will, you'll get the lines from your cutting plate onto the foil and it won't look very nice. The other thing is if you've got dots still in here like these, I can see there's one there and one there. Um, do make sure that the whole of the plate is clean. The reason for that is if you don't, it will actually fill the void on the back of your die here leaving one in from before. So when you die cut it, you will have a, a one that doesn't actually cut properly and it won't look good. Um, not, not, not too bad because what you can then do is if you've got a sentiment, say you could put the sentiment over the top of it. There are ways to disguise it because it's not one directional. You can put it um, top, bottom, middle, whatever you want to do with it um, and make sure that you can put something over it just to disguise that if it does fill one in by accident. Okay, so I'm just placing that over there, staggering my plates. And I'm going to come out the other side. Okay, just take that layer. Oh, I'll take both plates out because I can show you what's happening. As Louise has just joined us, I'm not sure if you caught me on Sunday. These little pieces here are the pieces we're going to keep. Okay, there's a bit of static there which will pick them up. You won't be able to capture all of them. Um, you will have some escapees but in the main that was one that came off the table I think so I'm just going to run my brush over these Done with that a bit. so if I tip these onto the paper 
Okay, we do want to capture as many as we can. They are static and they do jump. Okay, so now if I just run my fairly close to the table here, don't hold it up in the air, you want them to push through and be caught. Okay, one pass of each of these will give you loads and loads of little dots. Okay, the ones we've just used were the foil ones. These ones are plain card, but I am going to make these nice and pretty for you. Okay, so I do like to just make sure they've all tapped out. There's no stray ones on the back. Oh, there's one there. Tap them all off. This will be used for another project. Sorry, I'm, I'm sliding down here. So this will be used for another project. Okay, so I'll part, pop that to one side. Put those two up on here. And as I said before, do make sure you clear all the little plugs out because if you don't, then it won't um, cut properly next time. Nice and clean, and that can go away. Okay, so all of these on here, pick up the stragglers. Um, then these are all little de decorations. These are sequins, they are whatever you like to make them. So in here I have white and copper, and now I have blue. I am just gonna use what I want to use for today. Um, pop them to one side. I've run out of containers. I've kind of used all my lids. Ooh, is that empty? No, there's something in there as well. So I need another container for this at some point. So what I'm gonna do is pick up, um, if I work out where my sentiment is gonna go on here, and I do have a heart, the heart duo punch. So I kind of want to work out what's gonna go in here. So because of the stamp set that I've got here, I'm just judging whether this is gonna go in here. I think it might. So what I'm going to do is pop this on a block. So you are positively the greatest. Okay. I know I'm off camera. Sorry about that, guys. I'll bring you back up. And we'll have a piece of the cream card again. Oh, she says. Just put on the chair beside her. So I stamp this one first. And I've got all the in colours beside me, so I've got those off camera. So I'm going to stamp this and then I'm going to cut that heart. And there we go, that's that one to be clean. Now this one's going to be punched in the plain heart, and I judged that pretty well. That's just about going to fit in there. Okay, just get that nicely in the middle and watch the tail on this side because the G on here is just a wee bit on the close side. Okay, so make sure that you're happy it's straight. That's the most important thing. Punch that one out. Okay, and then we're going to use the scallop punch and a piece of the card that we cut off the side. We're just going to use that one. Okay. I love punches, they are the best. Now I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna match those two up and I wanted that to be my feature image on there. And then here on the outside, let's pop those two together. My matte layers are flat so far, so I'm gonna make sure that this one's raised up on pads. Slide that off there a little bit. Let's put that onto the plain piece of paper. Okay, so that's going to go like so. So the points are level, top and bottom. Oh, I'm just going to pull that off there a minute. I can see that this one's got a little bit missing. Went a bit close to the edge of the card. So we'll just do that one again. The other one won't be wasted because, I'll show you a trick. When you have two somethings, and this one here is just sawn off the edge, then you can actually have that like coming off as a double like so, so you can stagger them. So it can be used, so that's not a problem. Just put some more Tombow on here. Waken that up. So this one's gonna go on here. Go just slide that bottom around a little bit. Okay, and then this one's going to have foam pads on the back. 
one, two, and three. Out of the way. So I don't know where I'm going to place that at the moment. Maybe over to the side. But what I am going to do, we have the copper in here. We haven't finished yet because we're going to use some of the, these are the um, glimmer ribbons. So each of these marry up with one of the new ink colours. They're not 100% colour match, but this is the darker blue. So that would be the one that I use today. They have unravelled a little bit in the bag, so I have a little bit of a mess on my hands. So we can wind them up later. They are adorning the table at the moment. These are gorgeous um, ribbons. They really are. Just roll that round. So what I'm gonna do here is put a, a bit of a zigzag going on. Okay, so if I just put a couple of pieces of this on there, do I want it in the center or to one side? I think about there might be, yes, about there in the middle, I think. So I'll put a couple of pieces of tape on. Okay, this isn't to hold the, um, it's my pricky tool, it's the wheel, the brush. Um, this isn't to hold the ribbon in place so much. Um, the, the, sorry, the embellishment, it's just to hold the ribbon. Okay, so I'll put a little bit of a zigzag on here. From the end, I'm gonna trim the ends because they do fray a little bit. So down there, off the edge back again okay back this way if you've put the some form of adhesive down I wouldn't use wet glue but maybe tear and tape or snail not snail um the oh yes stamp and seal it's gone from my mind at the moment so you can zigzag that, that a little, little bit over there like so um and just have that at the right angle then in fact, I think I might just do a three I'm going to change this slightly and just come down as a three so it's going to come this side come back over through there and just space those out the good thing about the tape is the fact that you can lift it on and take it off okay so if that goes off to the sides like so trim the ends and trim this frayed end Okay, ribbon out of the way and then this can sit over the top so those they will be hiding those pieces of tape on there you have just got that little bit of ribbon coming out the ends that's nice then I'm going to put some more of the little um, dots and spots in we're just using the dots today oh Julie hello yes I'm fine thank you we're very hectic as always um, but more so with our guests at the moment. Um, so uh, sorting out lots of things. So that's the, my card, but we haven't finished because what I want to do is use some more of the dots. So here we had the white ones and the copper ones. I haven't got another container at the moment on my desk, so I'm just bringing this back over. And we're gonna randomly put some of these on. So we're using the putty end again, and we're gonna place some of these in the holes. Don't want to do many, but I just want to do a few random ones. So work out where you'd like them to go. Oh, that's a bit much. Just soak that up. Don't want to have too much in there. Okay, so we'll pop that one in that hole. In there. And can you see how they just fill that nicely? Okay, just get those out of here confusion eye okay so what I'm doing they're nice and flush now so I'm just putting some little tiny dots just randomly like you'd throw some um, sequins on there some gems or something it's just not wanting to come out at the moment I think it's just gunked up a bit just using that onto my kitchen roll first just to make sure that it's not not going to flood out little tiny dot in there so pick up another one when you have these come out of here they, there is a right and a wrong you've got the cut side that goes downwards it goes away from you so it goes rounded that way so just take a little bit of time just to find the right side um, 
I'm just going to do one down here. And again, we're going to do odd numbers. I'm going to pop that one in that hole. Okay, so that's three. Might have to do five on here, I think. So we'll have one coming up here. Just a little dot in there. Come on, come on. There we go. So again, just the rounded side on the top. Pick that one up and put that on the glue. Okay, and they are smooth, so you can just touch your finger on the top. And then we must have one up here somewhere, I think. We'll do one at the top there. So you think about making your card as a base, which is where I started with the copper. Um, place that in there like so. Okay. So what we've done here is we've had the base. I want a couple more maybe. Who's still on there with me? Tell me if you think that needs a few more of the dots. I've got five on there, but I'm just wondering if I could do a few more. So tonight I showed you how to use the background, but then save all of those dots. They are fabulous embellishments, okay? So you can then go and fill those holes in, okay? And just bring the theme of your color through that's popping from the card. And then on this one, we've just used the copper ones that we cut out from this one, just to put some little embellishments on here as well. Okay, so I'm looking at this thinking, it, I think it needs a couple more it doesn't seem to be any down this side so let's work out where I think we could do one maybe one here oops there we go and then one maybe in a little bit and somewhere oh, it's too low yeah try not to put them too close together so I've got one there and I'll have one just there just a tiny little dot just so it picks it up pick those up from your take your pick tool and just make sure that that's pressed down and then one more and I'm going to put that there okay it just gives it that extra little bit of color just a few more hi Anne nice to see you so yeah I've got seven on there now so I've still got my odd numbers okay but these ones on here have just gone in the holes so they match nicely these ones have just been used on their own on here okay and in case you missed the one on Sunday this was a case from um, uh, another demonstrator one of our um, our design team um, and I want to do this one differently but it showed you just some threading ideas so you can look back on Facebook and see that okay if I was doing this with cardstock so all of these ones I have left on here and maybe even some of the white ones, not the foil, but the plain card ones, you can actually touch the top of those with your Wink of Stella. So you could do the same with those. And then you could put on some, um, I'm sure it's still in the catalogue. We have the fine glue pen here. So this is the, um, yeah, I think it's just called fine glue, yeah, fine tip glue. And I think that's still in the catalogue. Um, and then literally just squeeze this on the top and actually make a glossy dome on it. And that would make some more another embellishment so you can make your waist go a lot lot further and like I said um, on Sunday there's a lot of ideas I've got that I'd like to use with these sort of um, waste because I'd love recycling smudge is just scratching and saying hello everybody so um, there's some yeah lots lots of different ideas I've got a list in front of me that I've done um, as to what I'd like to play with so um, there will be more. Maybe I'll, I'll try to have a theme for the week. So um, maybe next week I'll have a different theme and I'll come back to it again. Um, this is um, uh, our annual catalogue. So we are good and good to go with this one. I'm just going to take that off and bring you back to me. Um, yeah, the, the annual catalogue is here for 12 months. So if you, you know, you will see this prop crop up again, but I'll do maybe do another session with a few of these um, uh, uh, later on and just keep showing you things that I've made with the using the waist up, okay? And it's just a lovely, lovely standalone die. I really love it, okay? So thanks again for joining me. Um, I know the faces I've seen on there probably follow um, uh, me anyway, but if you're watching this on replay and you haven't seen me before, then please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. You'll be notified when I come live. Um, I'm live on a Wednesday night at nine o'clock UK time. Okay, so that's all from me at the moment. Um, if you have got a long wish list and you're looking, um, you want to
purchase lots from Stampin' Up. There is a fantastic offer on at the moment, so please contact me. It is only valid until the end of the month, so the 31st of May, but you would be able to get a whole a stash of the in colour products on top of your starter kit absolutely free. Fabulous colours and fabulous way to get them for free, so do get in touch with me. Okay, but other than that, have a lovely week. Catch you on Sunday on Facebook Live or again here next week.